Next, we have an item from our last council meeting. This falls under old business. Uh, it's a resolution to condemn the structure at 475 East Robbins, number 183. Uh, Chuck will be probably talking to this as will Spencer and then anyone in the audience who would like to uh, address this. If you would, when you uh, come up, if you would state your name and address for the record, please. Well, I met with Miss Bowden. Boy, I don't want no other her, of her places. And she says my demands are too harsh. I excuse excuse me, ma'am. Would you state your name and address, please? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm Sheila Miller. My name is Miller, and I live at 475 East Robin Street, Lot 183. Thank you. One of the questions I assumed y'all were going to ask me, and I spent a quite a bit of time trying to put my thoughts to what I thought you'd want to know. Anyway, I met with her, and that went over like a hill of beans, because she thought I was going to care that she's upset about what I'm doing. Now, what do you think? Now, on that note, Amber met with her on my behalf, who works for Pastor Phil, Amber uh, McPeterson. She said to Amber what she tried to say to me, but she caught herself, but she probably said a little harsh to Amber, but either way, I don't care that my demands are too harsh too strong and too much. I say her slumlordness is too harsh and too much. And the people out there have asked me to mention that the trailer park is overtooken with bed bucks. Main trailer for that would be behind trailer 157. He's now withholding his rent. His name is John. He's grew up with my kids. And if it's 157, he would be 156. And she got mad and stormed in his trailer during this uproar. And my daughter was there and saw it because her and John go back to school. And uh, she's smarter than fifth grader. She didn't say nothing to my daughter because my daughter would have told her what she thought about her and that wouldn't have been kindly. John told her to get the mm out his house. It's overran with bed bugs. John said that she didn't inform him that it was bed bug written when he got it. Ma'am, ma'am, if you would, uh Let's talk about. Well, the I just wanted to mention let's, let's that. Talk, let's talk about the property at 183. Okay. Well, John yeah. asked me to mention that, and I okay. told him I would. Okay. Well, thank you. But let's let's just talk about the property at 183. Well, um, 183. Mick Peterson met with her for me. I met with her. My my demands are not too harsh. If I'm going to take another one of your trailers, and I already don't want your water. And I'm sorry, I should have brought John. That's why I gave you his trailer number. He's more than glad to talk to y'all. But. Um, I don't think my demands are too harsh to walk, you know, to walk through another trailer and to look it over. She thinks that's too harsh. Well, ma'am, you know, we're here specifically for that property because we're, I don't we're basically, it. you know, we're basically saying the one that you live in now is just uninhabitable. It's unsafe. It's unsafe. Well, that's true, but all of the trailers out there are and unsafe. That, and that may be, and that's an issue you can have with Mr. and Ms. Imboden. Well, I'm trying but, to get to the health department in Little Rock. Don't think I'm not on that. Oh, I'm, I'm sure but you are. All you, you can follow up on all that, but as far as this property, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was, was going to give you a chance well, to talk to Dr. Fletcher. He's, he, I'm, I'm hearing you out, and I have to stand firm with you because I'm the person y'all are trying to make homeless. And I've lived in these conditions, and I stood up to her. That's how the Arkansas laws for renters got involved, and I read that in my last statement. I have to stand firm and not back down because I am the one you're trying to make homeless. Okay? The same way... I, when John asked me to bring that up, I brought it up. My kids and I witnessed to her booming off in there. She shouldn't be taking her attitude with what I'm doing and doing on behalf of everybody out on them. Take it out on me, because my, my skin is thick. I'm here because I'm strong enough to handle it. I, and I see that I, you are. I, I don't know. I guess we'll just go like this. I'd like to read y'all, and that way all of America gets to see it real good. We'll start with this Is it one. limited to the property Well, this is limited to my trailer. Yes, sir, it sure okay. is. For city council, I'm no longer paying the Bowden's rent as of October 1st for a trailer y'all find to be bad at the least in need of work. I have also let the Bowdens know in writing their rent will stay in the bank until I get a livable place or can get out. Those laws are practices in other states, not of Arkansas, because Arkansas doesn't protect the renters. That's correct. We cannot come to a fair solution. That's the meetings I'm referring to. 
I've even allowed Amber McPeterson to meet with the, the Embodens on my behalf. She could not get a fair solution. And she helped y'all quite a bit with Brookside, so Amber knows exactly what she's doing. If that name doesn't ring a bell with y'all, it should. Okay, Amber's phone number's here, and I have her trailer number. Do you want that at this time? Oh you should have it. Because Amber said she has no problem coming forward. Now's the time. We couldn't get to a fair solution. I no longer wish to rent from them, and they no longer wish to rent to me. Now, I've 100% stood up to them. That's why they don't want to rent to me, because they had no problem taking my rent up to October the 1st. <sighs> For City Council, this is why I thought they would be here to represent themselves. My rent was 300 when I took 183. Then I did all the work on it. While moving in that made things look the same and, and more livable. But when I moved in the, in, the stove went out. The stove caught on fire actually two times. The last one was an explosion. I told her, keep your stove. I now own the stove that sits in 183. But when I moved in, the stove went out two times. She got, she got another one. It went out. The second explosion was too much because my granddaughter was putting a pizza in it, and it just popped and lit up. No, no. So I got a stove. I own that stove. The one that's in it now, I own it. And then the hot water tank. Now, this was a fight to be seen. Then the hot water tank went out. The tank went out. The water tank. She went off. She lost it. I told her I ain't buying one. She went off about that. But the deal was that she had to, to pay for things that cost cost a lot. I don't own this trailer, so I'm not putting one in it. Putting things in it that cost a lot. After much arguing with her, I got a hot water tank. When I have men to do the work, I try to come up with what I need. Like y'all were told that last time. Because when I asked for what I need, she goes off. And I've made her, I've made her, I've made her list before, rolled out with, with needs. Because she came up with this new rule. If you made her list, she would get to it. That's a joke. That's a joke. She well, does not. Can I, and I don't mean to cut you off. I just want to ask you a couple questions. Last time you were here, you kind of talked about the condition of the trailer and what you've had to deal with. Yes. This is all, this is all kind of issues. Well, because I thought she was going to come in and defend herself on these things and, here. And they're not here, I don't think. Uh, but I'm just saying that you agree with the inspector. and it's I really agree not. with not being homeless. I will be living in my van with my pet, yeah. which will give me no running water, which will give me no air. Oh, and I have medical papers from my doctor outside that he's given Conway Corp saying I have to have my air to breathe with my heart and my ass asthma and with my seizures uh, so you're you're putting me in a situation that can cost me my life at least here I have electricity that allows me air if you will give me one minute I will go outside and get you that document from did, my doctor ma'am last time you're here you talked about the condition of the trailer the condition the of the trailer needs fixed the, and, and the water needs fixed but if you put me in my van I, ha, I have well, no bath you, and I have no air extra time and I think there's a lot of resources around town no I've tried them I've tried them I've got a paperwork outside where all all your, no, no, there's not. No, there is not. Phil and them are not lying. There is nothing available to me that I have not been on the phone with or that I cannot get on a list, and my name will not come up first. Do you understand? I could be on that list for years or at least a year. No, sir, you are a liar. Fartner County offers me and my family nothing, nothing. You offer me nothing but my van. Nothing. And I can prove it with one stepping out to my van. I can prove it that you offer me nothing other than to continue to live with a slumlord because you will not and have not to this day fought to change the renter laws in Arkansas. Well, I'm not the legislature, ma'am. And you Well, I'm here you know. to take on the legislator and starting with Faulkner County Council. I will be homeless and I have more documents outside to show my health through my doctor what will happen to me when you remove the only electricity
electricity source, in which I have. Could your health be a cause of where you live? No, I was born like this. I was born with seizures. They knew that around the time that my seizures strain out my veins behind my eyes, it's straining out every muscle in my body, which destroys the muscles in the veins around your heart. I was born with it. I fight to live with it. Do you understand? I fought to be a rodeo rider, bull rider. I fought to be who I am. I told my grandmother, my mama is hard enough to live through, but grandma, I'm going outside and I'm playing in the dirt, live or die. So I will step outside and get you the document from my doctor. But you have no right to leave me without electricity that can cost me my life. So I'm going to let him step up here when I step out and get that document. So you can call Mr. McBay, Bill McBay, a liar. Dr. Fletcher, do you have anything to add? Go ahead. Do you have anything to add, sir? Um, So on the the options available to her, so... um, Amber's been on it. I got it. I got it. It's okay. 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 I trust you. Okay. Uh, the options that are available uh, to her and people in situations like this, it's severely limited. So with uh, with HUD housing, the wait is long. Uh, with the amount of income that she makes um, and what she has, she has two dogs. So there's a lot of people in her situations. Dog. And Pretty and me have been together 10 years. He tells my family when I'm sick by laying across me, I don't think we should have to be separated because I had the nerve to stand up to a slumlord. The other is my granddaughters, and my other daughters are standing up for him, but I don't think me and Pretty should have to be separated. Not one day I paid and did everything I was supposed to do to have him. So dogs are companions for a lot of people, and I think... We even know that. We run into that with persons who are homeless on the street. They, they make that choice because a lot of places don't want to give up their animals. So I hope people will understand that. And then landlords that will rent with animals, the deposit is a lot higher than uh, what she can afford. So uh, the situation in which uh, Ms. Sheila is in is a, a pretty dire one. And if I understand the ordinance correctly, voting to condemn it today, it gives it another 30 days. So um, I'm doing what I can. We're working with CAPCA uh, to see what funds they have available. But even then, the issue becomes, if CAPCA fills a gap typically for six months, once that six months is over, she's back in the same situation again. So, and that's if CAPCA has the funds, but there's women up there in Omi that, that are willing to pull every okay. penny they can find. Okay. Me and Amber's working on that. So. In the immediate, uh, the, I want to the extra, that paper the extra 30 days. You keep talking. I'm going to get okay. that paper from my doctor. I need out for a minute. I need out. I trust you, ma'am. I need out for a minute. Can I, can I ask you something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm sympathetic to putting anyone out. Yes, sir. But by the same token, and I'm not a negative on this, did she just said she didn't want to live there and she wasn't paying the rent there? Is that when she started off this conversation, that she did not want to live there and she didn't want to pay the rent there? Well, and basically telling us that the place should be condemned. Yes, I know, so, sir. So, yes. so where do you go from that? If she's telling us she don't want to live there and not paying the rent there and telling us not to condemn the place, but well, she's basically saying she's not, she's not going to live there. Then, then, I mean, I understand the slumlord issue, but mm-hmm. that's legislative. We don't have anything to do with that. Yes, sir. I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to find out what is she telling you she wants to do when she's telling us one thing. And I, that's the way she started out. I'm not living there and I'm not paying the mm-hmm. rent there. Mm-hmm. Well, won't they evict her over time if she doesn't pay her rent? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's... Yes, they... Well, so they would have to go like, through a process to evict her. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, court, no. But, uh... Councilman Jones, on to your question, uh, it, it is a mix of tension between sh- she wants a place to live. Mm-hmm. Uh, she started this process uh, with the understanding that the way enforcement was to work, that she was hoping that it would force uh, the Imboden's hand to fix their place in order that she would continue to go on to live. Mm-hmm. Uh, since it is their property, mm-hmm. um, the, they're, they have no recourse, if you will, to fix it. Okay. Uh, do they have any other place that they, she can live in? Do you know? 
There is another place that we are looking at. I mean, at, at M. Bowden's. The, M. Bowden's. At, at, at 475 East Roberts. Is there anything else? Available? We discussed number 169, but she don't want to fix it. She doesn't want me to do a walkthrough with Phil and Amber and me, and I'm sorry for interrupting you. That's the one. Yeah, so, I mean, so you got it, so you got it, so you have this issue where a landlord's like, you want to rent the place mm -hmm. or not? And you're going to rent it typically in the contract as is. As is, yeah. All right. And a, a renter is stuck with the situation of if, in an income basis, this is all they've got, it's either be on the street or I'll I'm going to rent this what, place. Take what they can get. And yeah. in a situation like this, mm -hmm. I can try to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, but then fixing it can come into a cost as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they want to do fixing to the outside, there's things they got to come down here to do to get permits and stuff, which costs money to, mm -hmm. to fix it in some cases. And Dr. Fletcher, you've been yeah. to her residence. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's beyond repair. Correct. And, uh, and I've been working with some people who are following this, and it's not in anybody's best interest, economic interest, uh, to fix the place. Mm -hmm. and, and part of it is I don't want to keep giving them money. No, no, no. To be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how bad is, is 169? Well, I have one of my guys looking at it. He's sending me some pictures. The outside, it looks fine, but again, it's when you go on the inside. What's the roof like? What's the floors like? What is the, uh, the plumbing like? Those either. main things. So we don't have the ability that. to yeah. force anyone right. to rent to her. No, I know, right. but he was saying that was available. I was just asking. Right. It it there's a problem with that, Even too. Even though it may be empty, it may not be available to her. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's a problem with this, too. This nice lady finds another place to live, and we don't condemn the trailer. You rent somebody else, and somebody else is in your it. position. Yep. So we have to condemn the trailer. So the trailer has right. to be condemned at some point and gotten rid of. Oh, or, I'm not, I'm or, not saying, I'm yeah, not saying yeah. those. Yeah, and it it may be the trailer very well may be on repair. It probably is, but until it's officially condemned and the clock's ticking, the bones have no um, incentive to try to even fix it, and they won't. Not at all. And they won't. And uh, 169 well. is where my kids' stepdaddy died with cancer, but my kids have a mental feeling for that trailer. And I went down and I looked at it even when the second party discussion was going on with, with Amber. No, no, I went down before Amber. Amber. I mean, I only went and looked at it because it means something to my kids because we have been badly without Tony, because Tony would fix her property for us, and Phil has fixed her properties. I can't blame Phil anymore for wanting not to fix her properties. I can't blame him. But I'm passing this paper around because I have no reason to lie. I must have my electricity rather than live in my van. But before I give up pretty, I will live in my van, and we will live our last days out together, whichever one goes first. And that's how old my dog is. To, to, to move this discussion a little more along, I would like to mm -hmm. throw out, uh, is this a resolution or an ordinance? Resolution. What is it? resolution. All, right. resolution. All right. I move that we adopt the resolution to condemn. Mm -hmm. All right. Second. All right. So we officially made that motion or ordinance resolution. So we, now, if we pass this, it, Starts the clock ticking. You have 30 days. Okay. Nowhere to go. Well, you have 30 days. I have nowhere to go. You have 30 days. I have nowhere to go in 30 days. At least you're going to let me live over at the jail to start the night. I have nowhere to go but in my van. Do you understand? Do you understand you have 30 days? I have nowhere to go. There's no money. There's no means. I have nowhere to go. Does she have family? Miss Miller, do you have a family? Okay, regardless. Okay. No, and, 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 and my daddy sure ain't stepping forward, so no, I have nowhere to go in 30 days but into my van. And I want to go on record saying that to him. I want all the United States to see me look this man in his face and say in 30 days you are condemning me and my dog to my van without electricity with a letter I just gave you from my doctor saying she must have electricity. You said you had family in Malvern last week. No, I will not go and leave my grandchildren and my children in Conway. That is not an option. And I already, do, and I have a you cousin. You have family, correct? Not to live with, no, because I can get a statement from my Aunt Peggy that my, my cousin's living in my grandma's house. It's not open to me. That can be arranged for you legally, too. Okay. So I have nowhere I'm, to I'm go. I'm just going off what you said last time. I That's could it. have went That's to Aunt Peggy's, but Brad is living in Grandma's house. My grandma passed away. 
Brad has took the house because no one else stepped up. He's living in my grandma's three-bedroom house. Excuse me for Ms. Smith. Let's hear from code enforcement for just a moment, please. Take a break. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Thank you, Dr. Fletcher. Thank you all. Um, <clears throat> my heart certainly goes out to Ms. Miller about this, this entire situation. I don't really have anything to add that hasn't already been said, and um, hopefully you've had a chance to watch the video that we provided. Uh, I just want to make a couple points. Um, we spoke with Jody at Conley Corporation, and they tested the water out there. This is just a few matters of public interest, I think, uh, since the last meeting and, and things have been added today. Uh, the water in the park is good. Chlorine residual was at uh, 1.07, and uh, according to Jody, that's really good. That's in a really good range for healthy water uh, that's being provided to the, uh, to the people living at the trailer park. Uh, Bob Imboden and I have been working together. Uh, after Brookside, Bob reached out to me, and he knew that we were uh, had been looking at trailer parks, having them under the microscope, and he wanted to make efforts to make his trailer parks uh, safer and more sanitary and into compliance. And uh, just a, a couple of a couple of issues, and this is dealing with the outside of the trailer parks, but uh, something to note, uh, total cost to landfill dump year to date from Bob and Bowden taking shipments of, of trash and garbage to the city landfill has been $2,014.50. Labor cost is at $2,700 year to date. Total trips to the landfill year to date has been 47, and he's dumped over 68 tons of trash out of that trailer park uh, since I've been working with him. So there, uh, I, I just feel like that's an, that's an important thing to mention that there have been efforts made to uh, at least keep the outside of the trailer park cleaner and into compliance. Uh, as far as Ms. Miller's issues, uh, this is really in your hands. Adam. I don't believe there's anything I can add. So, thank you. Maybe people wouldn't mind paying the $5 charge she charges you to haul stuff off if she wouldn't mind fixing the trailers we live in. So people feel, hey, our trailers are falling down on the inside. What's it hurt her to haul a little trash off? Why don't she get dumpsters out of there instead of having us pay Conway Corp for small trash cans? Matter of fact, she removed my trash can yeah, when this all came down, and I told her to bring dealing, it back. We're dealing with trailer 183. Okay, well, we, we she can't re deal with the problems in the trailer. Park. Okay, well, she re well, he just brought it up like it was an issue that the Bob and Bowden's been doing us a favor, only in their dreams. All right. And okay, she removed my trash can this time that I pay Conway Court for. I got another trash can and told her don't do it again. Okay, I'm going to bring this back for the council. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Right, council, you have a, a motion and a second to go ahead and start the condemnation process. Yes. So, any further discussion, comment? Mr. Garrett. The resolution R1955. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Passes eight to zero. 30 days starts, Ms. Ms. Miller, Dr. Fletcher. I would request, Philip, if you would give us some updates on, get the, you know, the mayor's office some updates on how things are going, please. You don't care where I'll be. I want to leave. I'm going to be homeless, and they don't care. Right. Thank you for making me homeless without Aaron. Ms. Miller. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I got it, sir. I got it, sir. Okay. I, I do have a follow-up question. Spencer? Spencer, could you hop up for a second? One follow-up question. Yes, sir. How many tons of garbage did you say? How many tons of garbage? Yeah. 68 tons of garbage have been hauled out of Oakwood hey, Village Trailer hey, Park. Hey, hey. Yeah. Um, yeah, so <laughs> this 68 tons of garbage is only worth $2,000 of a charge yeah. in the landfill? But is it like $34 a ton? It's a, yes, it's, it's something like that. Okay. It's a, okay. So for commercial right. dumping. Yeah, I may be wrong with my numbers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. Fair enough. I've got, um, I've got all the dump tickets. He made right. copies of them for right. me. I'm just curious. Anyway. Sounds like a lot of garbage for a little bit of money. Yeah. Wow. It is since you're up here, is this yeah. the tip of the iceberg for this trailer park? Are there other trailers <coughs> this bad out there? I, I couldn't, I really couldn't say. Uh, this one, was, Ms. Miller invited me in, uh, and I, once I had, had seen this and as she pushed the issue, we, we got farther down the road. Um, I'm, I'm sure that there's some trailers out there that are, that are in bad shape. Uh, she's the only person that I've, I've had contact with to be invited in to look at it, that kind of thing. Um, I would imagine that just by the age of some of the trailers, probably some of them are in bad shape. Um, typically, there, there's there's kind of an issue also of unauthorized work 
that happens in these trailers. Somebody will decide they need to tear this out or fix this or open this window up, and they don't have the skills, the money, or the, the, the abilities to repair it, and the landlords don't want to fix their mess. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, that's kind of commonplace. So there, there's probably issues of, of repairs that have, have, gone, um, ha, that have gone unaddressed. Yes, ma'am. And I know that was a, a hard decision for everyone, Fine. but we, we've got to move down. I mean, yes. we've got, folks have got to have a safe place to live. Absolutely. So, all right. Thank you. All right. Thank Absolutely. Thank you all. Thank Appreciate you.